Hi, my name is Madison. Welcome to the IU Southeast Writing Center's video walkthrough of the MLA 9 Style Guide. In this video, we will discuss some general information about MLA, including which disciplines use it and why, formatting guidelines for the 9th edition of MLA, rules for creating in-text citations, which are also known as parenthetical citations, and how to correctly create citations for sources, including examples of some of the most common types, like books, scholarly journal articles, and websites. MLA is the official publication guide of the Modern Language Association. The manual provides guidance on how to document sources, including in the body of a paper, as well as on a works cited page at the end of the document. It also includes specific guidelines for how papers should be formatted, including organizational tools like section headings and appendices. The Modern Language Association works to strengthen the study and teaching of language and literature. Therefore, MLA is most commonly used to cite sources by individuals studying language arts, foreign languages, education, cultural studies, and other humanities disciplines. The ninth edition is the most current edition and it was released in spring 2021. Like most documentation styles used at universities, MLA requires that all text be double-spaced, including any text in the heading and on the works cited page. In addition, you should avoid extra spaces. Only press the enter or return key once each time. You should also use one inch margins throughout. This is the standard in both Microsoft Word and Google Docs. While MLA does not provide a specific font that should be used, their guidance does state that the font you choose must be clearly legible and accessible on most computer systems to avoid conversion issues. They recommend fonts including 11 point Calibri, the default font in Microsoft Word, or 12 point Times New Roman. Please note that because 12 point Times New Roman is considered an academic standard, your professors will likely require that font. If this is the case, or if your professor makes any recommendations that are not standard to MLA, you should follow their guidelines over the MLA guide. The image on the right shows a properly formatted MLA header. Begin by adding your last name and the page number in the right side of the header of the document. Note that it should be in the same size and font as the rest of the text of your paper. Then, on the left side of the paper, type your first and last name. Next, type your professor's name. The next line should indicate the core subject and number. Finally, type the date the paper is due in day, month, year format. Be sure to write out the entire name of the month rather than using a number. You'll then type the title of your paper, Centered. Please note that MLA does not normally require a full cover page. However, if your professor instructs you to create a cover page, follow their instructions for formatting. Before we talk about what in-text citations look like for MLA, it's important to take a close look into how MLA requires formatting direct quotes taken from sources. If the direct quote is four lines or fewer, you will simply embed that into a sentence, as seen in this example. Note that a direct quote cannot stand alone as its own sentence. It must be introduced in some way in your own words. In a direct quote, you are also required to provide the page number in the in-text citation if there is one available, like there will be if you are quoting from a book or a journal article. It is acceptable to omit this if there are no clearly accessible page numbers, which will likely be the case if you are citing from a website. If your direct quote is more than four lines, you must use what is referred to as a block quote. Block quotes are set apart from the text by each line being indented one time from the left margin. This can be seen in the example below. Block quotes are also unique in that you do not use quotation marks around them, as the difference in indentation indicates to the reader that this is a direct quote. Also note that the parenthetical citation goes outside of the punctuation mark when using block quotes. Block quotes must be used sparingly. If you are using a quote that is four lines or longer, ask yourself if all the information is truly necessary. 
Keep in mind that it is preferred that you use shorter direct quotes or paraphrase the quote whenever possible. All in-text citations that are used in MLA are referred to as parenthetical citations. These may be what you're familiar with thinking of as in-text citations. In a parenthetical citation, you will provide all of the required bibliographic information in a set of parentheses at the conclusion of a sentence or after a direct quote is used. MLA format follows the author page method of in-text citation. In these examples, you'll see that after the completion of the direct quote, the author's last name and the page number are provided. The punctuation for the sentence always goes after the in-text citation is closed, except when using block quotes as mentioned before. The author's name may appear either in the sentence itself or in the parentheses following the quotation or paraphrase, but the page number should always appear in the parentheses, not in the text of your sentences. Be sure that each of your in-text citations directly correspond to a complete reference on your works cited page. If you have a single author, you will merely need to provide the author's last name and page number for your in-text citations for that piece. There are many times, though, when a single author is not the only listed, or even cases where you may not have an author listed at all. This slide will provide examples of how to navigate some of these trickier in-text citation situations. If you have multiple authors, the way you format the in-text citation depends on how many. If two are listed, then simply provide both names in the order they are listed on the source. Separate names with the word and in MLA. As always, you will then provide the page number. If you have more than two authors, however, provide the last name of the first author listed and then write et al, which is an abbreviation that means and others. This is the case whether you have three authors listed or 15 authors listed. If you do not have an author, which may be the case for many web-based sources, you will use part of the title of the source as seen here. If the title is longer than two to three words, you may shorten it and only use the first couple of words. The title must be in quotation marks inside of the parentheses. Sometimes you may have an author, but the source may not have pages, which is often the case for websites. If this is the case, just omit the page number. You should strive to use sources that do contain both named authors and page numbers as they are important parts of establishing your credibility as a researcher. However, it is okay to use these sources sparingly if they appear credible otherwise. Before we go into specifics about how to create citations for the Works Cited page, let's touch briefly on some of the general guidelines regarding setup and formatting. First, be aware that all of your citations must be listed in alphabetical order on your Works Cited page based on the author's last name. If you have multiple sources by the same author, base which comes first on the title of the article or book. If you have a source with multiple authors, list the names as they appear on the source. Next, remember to double space your citations just as you did the rest of the paper. You'll need to use hanging indentation on your work cited page. You'll see this on the examples on the next slides but this means that the first line of every citation is flush with the left margin, and every subsequent line of a citation is tabbed over one time, so that it looks like the rest of the lines hang from the first. You can set this up by going to Paragraph and Spacing Options in Microsoft Word. Finally, be aware that one mistake students make is that they don't ensure that the first component listed on a citation must match what's in the in-text citation for that source. This is easy for author names, but for those sources with no authors, be sure that you are carefully matching up in-text citations with the citation page. In these slides, I'm going to walk you through creating some of the most common types of citations for the sources used in university courses. First, let's discuss books and book chapters. If you are citing an entire book, begin by providing the last name of the author followed by their first name. After the author's name, provide the title of the book in italics. Then list the name of the publisher. 
Finally, provide the date that the book was published. If the author is unknown, omit the author's name and begin with the title of the book. The most common citation type you may run across while writing papers is that of a scholarly journal article. On this slide, I'll discuss how to cite both a print journal and one found online. If you're using a print journal, you'll use this citation type. First, type the author's name. After this, type the title of the article in quotations. Next, list the name of the journal. This should be italicized. Then, provide the volume and issue number. The 15 in this example is the volume number, and it will always be listed first on the bibliographic materials. The 1 is the issue number that this particular article was found in. Next, list the year that the issue was published. Finally, conclude the citation with the page numbers of the article. Since students tend mostly to focus their searches on library databases, it's far more likely that you will be using online journal articles. You'll notice that this example is organized almost identically to the print version, except that you provide the container or database and the URL of the article at the end. This needs to be the stable URL, which is always provided in databases, but it is not the URL in the address bar of your web browser. It's important to look for the words stable URL on the database and use that URL. You may also use the DOI in place of a URL if one is provided. The DOI is the digital object identifier, and it is a series of numbers provided uniquely to each journal article. Someone searching for an article will be able to find it using either the stable URL or the DOI, so you may use either one. Finally, let's discuss how to cite electronic and web-based sources, which are also quite common. One problem students frequently run into while researching is that many websites do not name authors. While, as previously noted, this means you must exercise due diligence in citing these sources are not based on their credibility, it does not mean that you cannot use these sources. If you choose to cite a source with no author, use this citation type. In italics, provide the full title of the website. Again, the first word of this title must match how it is listed in your in-text citation so that the reader and your professor can see that they align. Then, type the name of the institution or organization affiliated with the site. Next, provide the year and the URL. Finally, provide the date you access the website. Another common source that students cite is web pages. When citing a web page, Begin with the author if available. Then, type the name of the web page in quotations. Next, provide the name of the website in italics. Then, type the date in URL. An increasingly common citation type is YouTube videos. For these, see the example. Begin by posting the username of the video creator and then give the full name of the video in quotations. Include YouTube as the publisher. If the uploader is different from the video creator, include their username next. Finally, provide the date the video was published, followed by the URL. If you have additional questions about MLA or other writing concerns, or if you'd like to schedule an appointment to work with a writing consultant, please visit our website at ius.edu slash writing center. We have more MLA materials available there, including sample papers and sample work cited pages with more citation types than were covered here. You can also follow us on social media by using the link on our website. We hope to see you soon.